Tonight I'm going to talk about uh, the cinematography on Big Hero 6, along with um, the rendering and some of the research we did. Uh, so one of the, the early mandates, uh, early in the development of, of the film was, uh, as, as has been talked about, is one, uh, this is going to be a huge world, it was going to be uh, this kind of unseen scale we just haven't seen in an animated movie. Um, and also, uh, like Don was talking about uh, earlier, uh, it was going to be uh, the, the city, San Francisco, which was kind of this mashup of, of San Francisco and Tokyo, which is, uh, like Kyle said, is, is something where, where you know, people really are familiar with you know, what those places look like and what the light is, is like. And so we wanted to um, be able to do uh, really believable light simulations um, for those worlds as well. And so uh, what we did was we developed our own render to help solve this problem. Uh, this started uh, developing uh, as, as a Big Hero 6 was developing around the same time. And uh, uh, it solved both these problems. It could do uh, physical light simul simulations. It was a global illumination render uh, that can do full ray tracing. Uh, but also, uh, like Kyle was talking about, it could handle uh, kind of this unseen scale, which I'll talk a little bit about how, how it did that. Um, what we call that is uh, streaming geometry. And what that is, is in a ray tracer, you have a, a camera here, and that camera fires out a ray. It actually fires a lot of rays out, but it fires out a ray, and it hits something in a scene, and it samples, samples that, and then that goes off and shoots a ray and hits a light. And, um, and that's how we, we know that that rock has been colored by that light. Uh, and then you can extend that, and it, it, it bounces more, and we call that one bounce. And then you go to this, and you extend that, and you can see it gets really complicated quick. In fact, uh, you know, generally a ray tracer out there, uh, you need to have the whole environment loaded at uh, a single time. Uh, with Hyperion, uh, there's this idea of streaming geometry where it uh, bundles up rays that are going in a similar direction, and then it uh, figures out what geometry it's going to hit. It does a test for that. And um, then it only loads up that given geometry, which you can see represented here uh, in the color. Uh, and what that lets us do is um, load up much smaller chunks of the geometry at a given time, as opposed to having to have everything loaded at once. And um, then we could have much more complexity and sophistication to any part of that environment at one given time. And that's how we were able to achieve what Kyle was talking about, this kind of, um, um, kind of almost infinite amount of, of data we could put into our, our cities um, at, at one given time. Um, like I said, we were developing this really early on with Big Hero 6. Um, it, was, it was kind of a, a risky thing. And so we were encouraging uh, all our artists to, to grab Hyperion as it was getting developed and try and test it, see what we can do with it, give us feedback on how it's working. This is an image that uh, one of our look artists, uh, Alex Alvarado, did. Uh, the image on the left is the uh, self-portrait that he did in Hyperion. And the uh, image on the right is a uh, caricature he did of his supervisors. <laughs> we have fun at Disney, so we can go to the next slide. Uh, and uh, so uh, around that same time, this is, this is about a year, uh, you know, Hyperion's really early on, and we wanted to uh, uh, kind of go really back to kind of simplicity, kind of like Zach was talking about spheres with the, the animation. We needed to do something similar with the lighting. Um, so we, we got a bunch of spheres. They're made up of a different, bunch of different materials, wood, marble, glass, and and actually, uh, we've got a ping pong ball there as, as well. And we have a an, uh, lighting studio uh, at Disney Animation um, where we can, uh, we have a full set of physical lights and cameras, and we can do tests and, and try different things out and research. Uh, so here we have the photo reference that we took on the screen left, um, and then the Hyperion uh, recreation on the uh, screen right. And you can see how, how close and, and kind of actually excited we were to see how well things were working uh, early on. Um, I should mention here, if you notice the uh, ping pong ball on the screen left and the shadow poking in, um, and it has that really kind of uh, luminous feel uh, of the ping pong ball lighting up that shadow, uh, that wasn't actually what we got our first try out. Actually, what we got was something more like this, um, where you can see, um, you know, I was talking about letting the, the light rays bounce around. Once we get to the lower screen left there, um, where it kind of looks like the ping pong ball looks like a kind of dirty kind of plastic ball, um, that's letting the uh, light bounce around one time. And that's typically what we were doing, and a lot of the industry does, is you can really only afford to let the light simulate one bounce, maybe two bounces. 
um, what we found is we needed to let the light uh, bounce around 10 times, which was um, a little scary because uh, no one had, had let things go that much. Um, but we, we uh, had to do it because as you can see, our main character, Baymax here, is made of vinyl, much like that ping pong ball. And um, as Don was talking about, you know, he needs to be really appealing. He needs to be likable and, and as he described, huggable. And as you see in the screen left here, bottom image, um, he has a dirty feeling if you just let the light simulation go one bounce. Uh, so we actually had to let it go 10 bounces. Uh, any shot with uh, Baymax had 10 bounces of light simulated. Um, and the environment um, here has about five to six bounces. And you can actually see the, the difference, not only in Baymax, but the richness of the environment when you let the light bounce around and you get that warm sunlight bouncing around. It really added to our imagery. Every shot in a movie um, had at least five to six bounces of light simulated, um, and any shot with Baymax was 10.